is February and all the gardeners are busy starting their seeds. So I'm seeing a lot of suggestions online for different kinds of pots to start your seedlings. Now some of these work okay. Some of them are completely stupid ideas. So what I want to do in this video is have a look at eight different suggestions for starting your seeds. And then at the end, I'll show you what I prefer. As I go through each one of these, I'll tell you what I like about them and what I don't like about them. I think it's important you understand what you're really looking for in a pot for seedlings. If you know that, you're going to have much more success raising things from seed. My award for the dumbest idea ever promoted online is the use of ice cream cones. Now, I seen this a couple years ago and I thought, oh, this has got to be a joke. No one would really try doing this. Even the pictures they use are complete fakes. You can't grow seedlings in an ice cream cone and have it look like this. But it turns out a lot of people gave it a try, and so did I, because I just had to get some pictures of how bad this idea really was. If you've ever had an ice cream cone, you know that once the ice cream melts, it makes the cone soggy. So how can this be a good thing to hold wet soil? The other thing, of course, is that an ice cream cone is made out of carbohydrates and lots of sugar, so that's the way it tastes good. Well, it turns out that mold loves that kind of stuff for food, and that's exactly what happens. Here's some pictures of my experiment. Very quickly, the water you put on the soil starts dissolving the cones and they kind of collapse. And within a few days, they get covered in mold. Horrible idea. Don't use this. Number two, using eggshells. Now, at least eggshells don't dissolve when they get wet, but they're far, far too tiny to grow anything. Now, you can germinate that seed, but within a few days of germination, you have to move it to a bigger pot or it just won't grow right. Now, this is a cute way to grow some seedlings for some kids if you want to do a little experiment. Show them how plants start growing from seed. That's okay. But if you want to actually grow this into a larger plant, eggshells are absolutely useless. The other thing about eggshells is once you put them in the ground, they don't dissolve. They're going to stay there and prevent the roots from growing into the rest of the soil. Forget eggshells. If you're not going to use the eggs themselves, how about the cartons they come in? I see that recommended a lot. Now this looks like a cute idea too, but it suffers from the same problem as the eggshells. The amount of soil there is so small, you can't grow anything in it. You can start the seeds that way, but within a week or so, you have to move them to a bigger pot, so forget it. Now this is the one I've been seeing all week, which really prompted me to make this video. And that's the use of toilet paper rolls or the cardboard rolls inside of paper towels. So what you do is you, you cut them up into a length like this. Cut a few slits in the bottom so you can fold the bottom over and you end up with a little container. Now the idea sounds good. You're going to recycle something that's garbage anyways. It's biodegradable. So once you have your seedling, you can just put it right in the ground. Well, here's a bunch of problems with this. First of all, it's still too small. You can't grow a mature seedling in this size of pot. The second problem is that it's made out of paper. And once paper is wet, it starts falling apart and mold grows on it. So you're going to have this moldy mess to take out into your garden. And what a lot of people who use this method suggest is that you just bury it in the soil because that cardboard will decompose and allow the roots to grow in the soil. That's actually not true. Your roots have to get into that soil right away. And the cardboard is going to take all summer to decompose. So if you're using this method, you have to take that cardboard off before you plant your seedlings. Number five is a commercial product, which has become really popular. And these are Jiffy peat pellets. It's peat moss that's been compressed into a little disc. They're very inexpensive and they're pretty easy to use. You take these pellets, put them in some water. The peat moss absorbs the water and expands into a little cup. And the whole thing is held together by a plastic mesh sack. Now, I really don't like these for a number of reasons. One, they're far too small. Two, they dry out really quickly. The plastic mesh is full of air holes and they just let the water ooze out the side and evaporate. So you're constantly watering these things. 
The third problem is that the manufacturer suggests that these are easy to use because once you're ready to go outside, you just take the whole thing and plant it in the garden. That's a big mistake. That mesh bag that surrounds it does not decompose as claimed by the manufacturer. In fact, I've had gardeners report that two years after using these things, they still find the mesh in the soil completely intact. That mesh prevents the roots from entering the soil. That's not good for seedlings. If you use these pea pellets, it's important that you take the plastic mesh off and throw it in the garbage. It's not compostable. I still wouldn't use them because they're just too small. Number six are pots made out of newspaper. And to help you form them, there's actually a little device that you buy and you wrap the paper around it and it makes a nice solid form. Now this idea is a little better because you can make much larger pots, but the device they sell you for making this is really too small. So if you want the larger pots, you're going to have to find something else to make them. But at least you can get a good sized pot. The newspaper will get moldy. It's very soft. The pot really doesn't hold well together, but it is manageable. So this idea is, is okay. It certainly isn't my preferred method. When you plant these outside, you still have to take that paper off. It does decompose, but it takes too long. When we put these seedlings in the ground, we want those roots going into the ground right away. We don't want them held into a small ball for a while until the newspaper decomposes. Number seven are peat pots. These are pots that are made by compressed peat. Or in one case, it's actually cow manure, and they're called cow pots. So these are pots with a very thin shell. They're not a bad size for starting seedlings. They're still on the small size, but they're getting there. Again, the claim for these is that you can put them in your garden. You don't have to take the pot off. It'll just decompose, and the roots will come out. That doesn't happen, at least not for a year or two. Take those peat pots off. You have to release the roots. Now, while you have them indoors, because it's a peat shell, it dries fairly quickly. It does get moldy, but this solution is not too bad. Number eight is the six cell seedling tray. These are little containers with six compartments. And a lot of times when you buy annuals, they'll come in those. They're plastic, so the soil doesn't dry out quite so fast. But because the cells themselves are pretty small, can't grow big seedlings in there. In fact, you know that if you buy some of these annuals, by the time you get them home and take them out, you'll see the whole root ball completely root bound and full of root. That's not good for the plant. This is a very economical way for nurseries to provide annual plants for us. It is not a great solution for homeowners because they're just too small. Other than that, I like them. And I have seen some of these that have larger cells, and they're certainly better. Now, if you have some of these from last year and you're reusing them, that's great. But what I would do is use them for starting the seeds. And then once the seedling gets two or three inches tall, take them out of there and put them into a larger pot. That way you'll get much better plant. Now, these trays that have lots of cells in them, they're far too small except for actually starting the seeds. Once the seedling grows a couple inches, you have to take them out and put them in a the larger pot. The other problem homeowners have with these trays is that they want to put several different kinds of seeds in a tray. So let's say you put a different seed in every row. Now some germinate and some haven't germinated. Well, the ones that haven't germinated, you want to keep humid and warmer to get them to germinate. The seedlings need to be moved to a cooler area under lights. But it's one tray. You, you can't separate those. So I see questions online all the time. What do I do now? Half my tray is germinated and the other half is ungerminated. The ones that are germinated need to come off the heating mat. They need to be cooled down and put under lights. The ungerminated seed needs to be kept warm and humid. Well, you have to pick one or the other. That's one of the reasons I don't like larger trays with multiple cells in them. I much prefer to have one pot to grow that plant. So there you have it, a review of some common ways to start your seeds. 
Now, all of these methods can be used. They all work. You just have to figure out how to get around the deficiencies of those methods. And in most cases, the biggest problem is just not enough soil for the plant. So what do I do? Well, I like plastic pots. Now, I know we shouldn't use plastic, but all my pots are recycled pots. I have friends who go out and buy plants in the spring and then they bring me their pots. So I have a big box full of these things and I use them year after year after year. A good quality pot will last you for 10 years. Now this one's a little flimsier, but I'll get five years out of this for sure. I generally start my seeds like this in a community pot. So I put quite a few seeds in one pot and I let them start to grow. And it depends on what they are. In this case, these are jackanapopas, and they're not going to grow very big before they will die back. They only grow for about three months, so they're not going to get crowded in here. In fact, most perennials will be fine in here for a year. So what do I do with vegetables or annual plants? Well, they grow faster and they need more space. So what I do with those is I actually germinate them in my baggy system. Once they're germinated, I will put one seedling in a pot this size. Something like a tomato plant will be this tall before it goes outside and it'll be moved from this size pot to a larger pot before then. So it's only good in here for about four weeks. Then it gets a bigger pot. If the pot is too small, it restricts root growth and it keeps that plant from getting large. So for vegetables, I want the largest transplants I can get. Here's another example. This is an anemone seedling that germinated around early December. And the first thing I did was put them in this pot. So I had about eight plants in here. They all started growing. And after about five weeks, I took them out of this pot and gave them their own pot, which is this one. Now this pot's a little on the small size, but it should be good enough to get me to springtime. If not, if the plant gets too large, I'll just put it into a bigger pot. Use plastic pots, give your plants lots of soil, and you'll have a much better success with your seedlings. If you want to know more about growing things from seed, I've put together a whole series of videos about growing from seed, and I'll put a link to that library in the top right-hand corner. Good luck with your seedlings.